Welcome to Be Bold Branding. Today, you are never going to hear the word no the same way again. We're actually going to change the way you view the word no forever. So what does that mean? I mean, how can you prepare for the word no and even change the perception and the reality of the word no when it comes to your business and brand? Well, there are actually three no's that you need to know. No pun intended. <laughs> know your nose. <laughs> That's right. Know your nose. It's like follow your nose wherever it goes. Who knows? Remember that was the Fruit Loop Toucan Sam, right? Yeah. That's right. Who knows what the nose knows? <laughs> Speak, B. <laughs> They're not going to take us seriously. They're just not. Okay. So anyway, there are three no's you need to know today, and we're going to go over these right now. I'm Tanya Eberhardt, founder of Brandface, where we help business stars differentiate themselves, and we do that through personal branding. Hey guys, I'm Michael Carr. I'm the COO of Brandface. I was a client before I became a partner in the company, and we're the only comprehensive personal brand building course across the globe. Thank you for joining us today to find out a new way to look at no's. No's are really great things. No's actually suck most of the time. Right? Well, they do. Because Nobody wants to hear no. We're quantifying no's for you guys today so they don't suck as bad as they normally do. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, honestly, you know, I, I actually first came in, you know, in, uh, uh, known, this concept first became known to me from a, uh, a sales manager that uh, worked at Electrolux vacuum sales. So right out of college, here I go selling vacuum cleaners door to door. For those of you who don't know my story, you can go ahead and laugh. And uh, and before talk you about even ask, knows. You talked about talk about things sucking, right? <laughs> uh, so bef before you even ask, it was Electrolux vacuum cleaner sales, not Rainbow or Kirby. Those are like uh, inferior products. <laughs> It was it was Electrolux. So the sales manager's name was W. T. Howell, and what a fine man he was. Uh, unfortunately, he has passed, and uh, rest in peace, W. T. And he taught me more about sales than any other job has before or since. And uh, he, in fact, he used to have sales meetings on Saturday mornings. Talk about another mandatory, sucking thing, Like you had to right? be there? It was mandatory. You had to be there. You had to be there. So I would show up. Here I am dragging myself in on a Saturday. I was in college, people. I mean, you know, I stayed up late the night before and practically dragged myself in there. That's tough. But when we would line up these folding chairs in front of a, uh, it was either a dry erase board or, or a chalkboard. I can't remember which right now. But he would go through over and over and over and just practically like, pound these sales theories into our head and it was the greatest sales training that I had ever ever received and I'll never forget two things that he said to me one applies today I'll tell you the other one first the other one was when is the best time to make a sale right after you've just made one because you're on cloud nine you're never gonna feel better about things you're never gonna top that level of confidence right listen to this guys think about this as yep. an acumen like this is think about that yeah. That's the best time to prospect it's when a, you just got a list. That's right. That's so right. Yeah. And that's a sidebar. Doesn't have anything really to do with our presentation today, but I wanted to honor WT by saying that and telling you what a fine man he was and what great, what a great trainer he was. So as it relates to our no presentation for today, one of the most poignant things that I ever learned from him was no just means they don't know enough. Think about that for a minute. I was Love blown it. away the first time I heard it. I couldn't have been more than like 18, 19 years old. And uh, sitting in amidst a big group of people, I was the youngest one there. And I was just, you know, soaking all of this stuff in thinking, gosh, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And I really used that because if you think of the old ways of vacuum cleaner sales, you, if you watch I Love Lucy, where they cracked the door open and the guy just threw the dirt on the floor and then he had no choice but to come in and clean it up, right? <laughs> that was not the way we did things. But... <laughs> but 
when I when I realized that when I walked in the door and I could actually educate them and tell them, first of all, I needed my story to get in the door. And that's where the first glimpse of personal branding came into my life. I realized this is not just about selling a vacuum cleaner, right? Because they're not going to let me in the house. Right. <laughs> most of the time they were not willing to let. Sometimes they thought, oh, poor little college kid, let's let her in, you know. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to use that. I'm just right. going to roll with that. So I said, hey, I'm in college. I'm working my way, you know, through school and paying for it myself. And uh, and if you would let me come in and demonstrate a vacuum and a, a you know, a shampooer, that, those were the good days. I got the double duty, right? If you let me do both, then I will get credits toward, you know, toward uh toward school, toward college, you know, not college credits, but you know, with my company, I got more credits toward that. And then they would contribute to school. And sometimes they actually did through their bonuses. So I use that and it was, and what I got a point in, of differentiation. it was right off the bat because so even if to them it was, oh, poor college student, right? I didn't know any better. I was 19. Yeah, but they probably didn't have a lot of college people knocking on their door, like, they, right? They, they see somebody that's working, that's trying their craft, working their craft. Yep. They right. had the guys in suits, even on a sweltering hot summer day, knocking on their door. Yeah. And then they had college the good kids, old days of sales. right? College kids. So, uh, so that really was my first glimpse into personal branding, and where I learned that if I get in the door and I give them more information and knowledge about me as a person and what I'm trying to achieve, they were as willing to help me as they were uh, to to buy, you know, to buy a vacuum cleaner. They'd be right. more willing to let me in to help me than they would to say, oh, well, I need a new vacuum cleaner. Cause but that was enough to get their attention. It was. And it then they might open up and then you can educate them. You know, one of the things you fight as a salesperson with that no and why he's so smart to say they don't know enough. And we make this joke all the time. How many of your clients are smarter than you ever will be in real estate, right? It blows my <laughs> mind. Like, it blow, I cannot sell enough houses to be smarter than most of my clients. Uh, selling their house but right. hey that's right that's their yeah. house that's their house that's their so, house but you and, and that you know there's so many like there's a quadruple entendre here you know mm -hmm. with i don't know enough they don't know enough about you they don't might not know enough about the product or the process or the service or the system or whatever that is mm -hmm. they and and they might not know you know certain things that are going to help them achieve what they want to what they want to achieve so no i don't no means i I don't know enough in terms of personal branding what that means is you need to get your story pulled together guys get mm -hmm. it pulled together so they know more about you and why they should do business with you it's a huge huge difference and it's and that really changed the word no that's probably the most powerful of the three we're going to talk about today yeah, but that so. changed the how I view the word no period it really did. So mm -hmm. that's the first one. They don't know enough. They don't know enough. All right. Hey, number two is the, the number two no is there is no one better equipped to help your client than you. Okay. No one better equipped to help your client than you. And you need to approach this with your sales techniques, right? Because we're getting in a little bit of coaching, but they, but do this because you need to have the confidence of why you are the best fit for that person and why you can show them the best way to get what they want, which is, you know, to sell their house. And, exactly. uh, but that it's very important. It comes as a direct, this becomes as a direct result of pulling your brand together and why that's very important. If you have your brand together, uh, if you have those elements, we know, I keep saying this, I feel like a broken record to, to this week. They, we know that NAR says that a huge percentage, 75, 80% of people look up their real estate agents before they hire them. They're looking at your social media. They're like, every one of those things are teaching them in a pull together brand why no one can help them better than you, right? And so it's selling before you get opportunity to sell. And, uh, and so it's very important that you pull that together. And that it's, and that then you'll be the only one, you could very easily portray, you are the only one that is equipped to be able to, to help them out. And that totally sets you apart against your competition. 
It does. And I think a large part of that formula, as it's been told to us over the years of, you know, helping agents and brokers brand themselves and all sorts of people, is that it gives them, once they pull their story together, it gives them such confidence. Yeah. And when you have confidence, it's just like that when we first started this, when we said, when's the best time to make a sale when you've just made one, right? It's that confidence that they feel knowing I've got my story together. I know how to help them know more about me. Mm -hmm. And now they need to know that no one is better equipped to work with them or help them than I am, right? And, and it, that confidence, confidence, it is confidence. And it, it, it is so, and that's why we're telling you about these no's. That's why we're turning these no's uh, upside down because confidence carries a lot of that. Like if when you uh, when you know in your mind that no one is better equipped for your client than you, it's very easily seen on their side that feeling okay. that no one is better equipped to help them with their problem than you, right? And when you've got your branding elements pulled together, you got your messaging pulled together, then you, you you're going to portray that first off in in a non-human way when they check you out and they're looking at you and they're seeing who you are, but then you, you get opportunity to sit down in front of them and they actually will listen to you because you're not hitting them with the sales speech. You right. know what I mean? You're portraying who you are. And your brand precedes you. Your brand precedes you. If it's done really well, they're going to know who you are before you ever even What you stand the room. for, everything, and why you're connected to them. So. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so the third no today is... Um, is very powerful and it is inspirational it's, my, it's, my it's yeah yeah i think the most powerful to me years ago when hearing that first they don't know enough was just like it turned it turned things completely around for me it's right. like oh no the doesn't album. you know because i'd heard enough no's by that time by the time i heard it to like last most people a lifetime you try going door to door selling vacuum cleaners you see exactly <laughs> what i mean okay so the third one is there is no one like you period yeah. no one like you now it's a little bit different from the last one there's no one equipped to help your clients better than you are right no and that is strictly from you've prepared for this you have pulled the brand together you have expressed what sets you apart and how you're perfectly suited to help certain types of people that's that the other one is more internal guys it's mm -hmm. there's no one like you period and we want you to know that in fact we always say we don't make stars, we unveil them. Mm -hmm. And and that means there's a star inside of all of you. And if you haven't pulled your brand together yet, what on earth are you waiting for? Because nobody else in the world has a story like yours because there is nobody else in the world like you. So stop thinking about business branding and start thinking about personal branding. Yeah, two yeah exactly. Totally different things. Because any business can have like a point of differentiation and a logo and brand colors and all of that kind of stuff. But when it comes to the human element, that personal brand, nobody in the world's going to have a story like you. No business should have the same story anyway, right? If you can line up 10 different pizza places and every single one of them had better have a different point of differentiation mm -hmm. to set them apart, no matter what that is. But in person, in the personal world, in the personal branding world, you need to not only set yourself apart professionally, just like the businesses do, but also personally from a human standpoint, because people instinctively want to know that face behind the business and they want to connect with the person. So yep. that's, you want to expound upon that one anymore? Well, no, that's it. You're like, so since you're like, we all say it all the time, since you're the only person that is like you, you know, they, they think about the uh, sphere of influence that you have surrounding you. So we teach this all the time, birds of a feather flock together. And yeah. so when we, when you show your point of differentiation, which everybody has, whether you know it or not, if you don't know where it is and you want help with that, then reach out to us. That's what we're here for, right? And then when you when you put your flag in the ground, like Tanya used to say, and then you say, okay, this is what I stand for, you're going to be quite surprised at how many people that attracts because they have those same interests, right? Or they have those same experiences and they feel like, hey, this is the perfect person to help me with, with what I need, right? No one is like you. So that's a great no. And again, it's a confidence building no because it puts it back on onto you and you have right. to feel like there look there is no one else like me that can provide 
provide this service. And and so a lot of times, like we, if we're going to go into it and we're going to say, uh, you know, I, how, how am I going to be different? We have clients say this all the time. How am I going to be time. different? How am I going to be different? Like, you know, we all take the same photos and we all write the same descriptions and we all have the same, you know, platforms and we all have the same RPRs and we're all members of the same and we have most of us have the same designations like this. We, we're, at, we're all the same. Well, that's why personal branding is so important because that's the business side of it. And yeah, we have all of that. But the people that you're doing business with, real estate is relational and they need to know that they connect with you on a level different than just some piece of paper. You can't convey that. You can't convey real estate in a piece of paper. They've gotten pretty good at putting it down, how you're gonna transfer houses and ownership and money with paper, but it don't. But you can't do that in a contract through the person that you're dealing with, right? So first off, is have that confidence in yourself. There is nobody else like me, and I'm perfectly suited to help you with your problem. And then reverse engineer it, and it makes it very simple. The next thing going backwards is there's no one better equipped than you because there's no one right. like me, and I'm the perfect person to help you. And then, then all you're trying to do is get past what they don't know, right? which is really how you're going to help them. And that's what they're interested in. So yep. uh, take those no's and turn them around into positives because it all starts right here in the mind. Yeah, and think, start thinking of no as a positive because when they first say no, that meaning they don't know enough, that gives you the opportunity to help them know more, right? Mm -hmm. They're all positive, no one better equipped and no one like you right they're all super positive so so those are the three i don't know enough there's no one better equipped to your to help your clients than you and there is no one like you period okay so we hope that helped you guys take a totally different look at the word no and not be have some discouraged. fun with it have don't some be discouraged great fun with it. do not be discouraged we all get it i guarantee you there are few people that have ever watched this video that have heard the word no more than me <laughs> <laughs> when you sell something door to door this is a totally different ball game hey get used to them get used to the no i had this friend one time he used to like to gamble right I, and i don't even think he was a good gambler I I really don't <laughs> right but he always won and so i asked him one time i'm like dude like like you don't you don't have a strategy here you haven't thought about this he was very good with numbers he was that and i'm like why are you so good at gambling he said i bet against myself i said what what are you oh, talking my. about he said like in 21 when i play in 21 blackjack he said when i know that i've lost several hands in a row a good one's coming so i just start doubling down and then it'll pop. And then when it pops, all of a sudden he's way ahead again, right? And then the whole process starts over again. And I thought, you know, if you could apply that That's to the no's funny. that you get, every no that you get, they don't know enough. And you keep the confidence that no one can help them like you can. And you leave them with that, with some statement that says that. And then you walk away knowing that there is no one like you and you are equipped to be able to help them. And you go through enough of those no's with those no's. And the next thing you know, you got a yes. And then, then go get go start knocking on more doors because you got success yeah. and oh, build upon that that was one more thing that wt howell used to say who was the sales manager at electrolux he used to say you celebrate every no because that just means you're one no closer to a closer yes to the yes very point one that I'm no making. closest like woo, i got exactly. another no very point that i was <laughs> making awesome. was, well with well, my gambling buddy one he's step like, closer exactly all right man that's one less <laughs> before i get to a yes that's right? true that's true so uh, we make fun we make fun with it because you, you do yeah. have to have fun with it guys look you gotta love what you do if you don't love what you do don't do it go find something else you do love to do because i it is the one thing that we encourage you uh to do is love what you do because so then you true. become better and better and better at it so listen we could talk about this all day long and we know that you guys are busy but uh, but we established a great way for you guys to connect with us discussyourbrand.com discussyourbrand.com and get started today even if you're not even sure about what it looks like to have a personal brand or what it is or if you think you have one and you want us to review it to see what we think about it or you know you want one then there's no better place to go than discussyourbrand.com. You can book a free 30-minute session with our staff. We try to field some of those phone calls ourselves, and when we're lucky we get the chance to do that and talk to you guys uh, about branding. We love it. So I hope that's you clear. Discussyourbrand.com. Yeah. Thank you. And if you guys like some of the message that you heard today, hey, we encourage you to please like it, love it, share it, and 
ding, subscribe. subscribe. So you can be the first one to know when a new video like this one comes out. We appreciate your time today very much. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Yeah, guys. And hey, remember, we know here at Brand Face, it's all about prosperity, okay? And we're not talking about money when we talk about that. We're talking about the 360 of abundant and content life. And we know that prosperity favors the bold folks. So we say be bold, especially with your brand. And thank you, Miss Tanya. Thank you, Michael. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.